Welcome to another edition of Racing from Home. This week, our special guest is the Naira's uh, Vice President of Racing, Martin Panza, who's had a lot on his plate lately. Martin, thanks for taking the time to join us. No, thank you for having me. Yeah, so Martin, um, I guess the, the biggest question that I have and many people would have is what went into your decision from Naira to run the Belmont on June 20th and at a mile and an eighth? <laughs> um, so obviously we, we got the call from Churchill Downs that they were moving the Derby to September 5th. And, and um, you know, we started talking with Stronic Group a little bit and, and we started looking at the calendar and different options and obviously talking with NBC on what might be available. And, you know, at the time, um, I think initially we started thinking, well, listen, there's football in the fall and September and October. Business is usually way off in those months because of football. And we started looking at, okay, what other options are there? Um, as tracks were closing and races were being canceled, um, and we started to, to reach out to um, other tracks, say Keeneland trying to run a race meet, we believe July 10th, 11th, and 12th, and maybe the Bluegrass on Saturday, July the 11th, the Haskell being on um, July the 18th, um, the Indiana Derby on July the 8th. We started looking at, okay, July 4th or July 18th is probably not a good option or July 11th because you've got this cluster of races already in that period of time. Um, we, we, if you try to move it up to Saratoga, um, it causes different challenges. Um, you've got the Jim Dandy, you've got the Travers. If the Travers is gonna move forward because the Derby is September 5th, then the Belmont doesn't really fit at Saratoga because what do you do with the Travers then? So you started putting all those pieces together and looking at the calendar and our racing committee looked and said, listen, there's really nothing in June at all. Um, why don't we offer the event in June? It lets the horses from the Arkansas Derby from May 2nd run in a race in June. And that race in June then feeds um, the Bluegrass and the Haskell and, and, you know, maybe the Peter Pan or whatever we put there to Jim Dandy um, in July. And we had told Santa Anita, um, we think we're going June 20th. Um, we had hoped that they had put the Santa Anita Derby the end of May. Um, they decided to go June 6 for whatever reason it is, but we landed on June 20th. And, and I think it worked for NBC as our, our television partner um, for a, a three hour window on that day. Um, the distance, we just really felt to, to, to have horses go in June and a mile and a half didn't make a lot of sense. Um, you know, the last big race for him would have been May 2nd, the Arkansas Derby. Um, to have the Belmont go first at a mile and a half and then have him regress back down to a mile and a quarter and then a mile and three sixteenths didn't make a lot of sense. And because a lot of these horses haven't run for a few months, we just thought, look, for this year only, it makes sense to make the race at a mile and an eighth. Um, we did not consult Bob Baffert and ask him what works best <laughs> for Bob Baffert. Um, we didn't consult Barkley Tag and, and say, Barkley, what works best for, for Barkley Tag? We looked at it as, look, here's a, a you know, group of races. We're trying to get these horses to the Breeders' Cup. Um, what makes sense? And our racing committee looked at it and, and basically unanimously said, look, let's go in June at a mile and an eighth. Let's not stress these horses and try and get them to go a mile and a half when they might not be prepared to do that. So for this year, um, it's about an eighth in June and, and that's where we're at. So let me scratch the Bob Baffert question off here. I was gonna <laughs> give you a chance to knock that one out of the park, but you took care of that one yourself. Um, you mentioned football in the fall. There's also the Breeders' Cup, the first Saturday in November. So once Churchill Downs surprised Naira and the Stronic group with their announcement that the Derby was good, was going to be on September 5th. Was there ever any serious consideration to reconstituting the Triple Crown with the Preakness on the 19th of September and then the Belmont on the 10th of October? I think there was. I mean, we looked at it, and I, and I think Stronic group looked at it, and I think we both came to the conclusion, and, and at that time, 
you know, it's easy to say right now whether there's going to be football or not. I guess we don't really know yet. Um, I would tend to think maybe not college football, but the pros seem like they're still maybe trying to operate in September and October. And I've read where the NFL is talking about if there is no college football, um, they might have games on a Saturday. And we just know, you know, if football's going, um, business tends to, to be off. And I think probably both Naira and Stronic Group came to a conclusion that that September 19th and October 10th scenario just didn't work from a financial standpoint for either one of us. Um, and, and then it, it became sort of, um, well, Stronic Group, what are you guys thinking? Well, maybe we'll go July 4th, maybe we'll go the end of September. And then we started looking at options and then I think eventually Stronic Group was like, you know what, we're probably looking at, you know, the October date. And, and my group was looking at, you know what, the June date sort of makes sense from our standpoint. And I think that's where we ended up. But initially we did look at that. Um, it just, to run the Belmont October the 10th, maybe with football there and to be four weeks from the Breeders' Cup, um, we were very nervous that if you won the Derby or you won the Preakness, you would just say, you know what, I'll wait for the Breeders' Cup. I'm not gonna run my three-year-old a mile and a half. We'll just wait the six, seven weeks or the four weeks and, and we'll just go right to the Breeders' Cup. Mm -hmm. So we were like, look, we, we could run a race October 10th with no Derby winner, no Preakness winner, and literally begging people, would you run your three-year-old a mile and a half? We know the Breeders' Cup is a month from now. And, it, and then you've got maybe football operating where handle would not be that good, and we've got no stars in the race. So I, I think looking at that scenario, we were like, yeah, this isn't gonna work for us. Um, and probably, you know, I, I can't speak for Astronic Group, but I think when they looked at September 19th, they probably came to that same conclusion. So, so Martin, now that we've got the Belmont Stakes, the date and distance put to bed, how much did you guys think about running Saratoga at Belmont for, for a variety of reasons, handle, you know, relocation expenses, for all the things, what did you think about and how did you come to the decision? Sure, well, we, we still haven't been officially approved to, to have a race meet at Saratoga. I, I think that's going to happen. I think the governor um, is for that. I think he's, he's said that, that, you know, there can be racing at Saratoga. Um, when we run the numbers from a handle standpoint, just the brand of Saratoga, um, we're going to handle more money racing out of Saratoga than what we're going to handle down at Belmont. And right now, with, with the Aqueduct Casino not open, Genting Casino not open, that's usually 38% of our purse money. And then when you take um, no on-track live attendance or live handle, that's another, say, six, seven, eight percent of purse money. And so if we stay at Belmont, we're not gonna handle as much money. We just don't handle the same amounts at Belmont that we do at Saratoga. The brand for Saratoga is much stronger. It would sort of like be saying to the California horsemen, why are you going to Del Mar? Why not just stay at Santa Anita? Well, because Del Mar, they'll handle more money at Del Mar and it's a specialty meet. Well, it's the same for Saratoga. And right now through the pandemic and with these tracks closed, we want to get as much purse money as we can out to owners and trainers. And at the same time, um, Naira, you know, we need to run this company and make sure that there is a Naira for next year. We're going to generate more money for the company being at Saratoga. And right now we're burning through about $1.5 million a week. So, you know, we've got some cash reserves, but we need to run the business in a smart, intelligent way. And so we're going to make more money being at Saratoga for the trainers. Um, you know, we realize there's an expense of going up to Saratoga. Obviously, we want to offer more purse money to them. Um, if there's no fans allowed, uh, there's certainly not going to be a rush on hotel rooms and on rental properties up there. And so I, I think, you know, rents are going to drop down. And I think for this year only, if you're a smaller trainer and you just can't justify that move up there, you stay at Belmont Park, 
we run a free shuttle. We're going to add more shuttle service so that we can handle those horses. And we're, we're doing some deals with hotels up there where you know, you, you'll get a trainer or, you know, if we can have owners and owners rate where if you got to go up for Friday night, you get a hotel room for the night and you, you keep training down at Belmont. So I think it's up to each individual trainer on what he can do for this year. But the goal is to get as much purse money out there as we possibly can. And Saratoga allows us to do that. Well, Saratoga is obviously the crown jewel, not just of Naira, but basically of American racing in general. And it strikes me that one of the fringe benefits of having the Belmont on June the 20th and all the supporting races that go along with it is that you're not cannibalizing necessarily some of those major Saratoga Stakes races. And for the three-year-olds specifically, it provides them the option of going Belmont, Travers, Kentucky Derby, if the Travers is moved earlier on the calendar. Is that a logical assumption that the Travers in Alabama will more than likely be moved to late July or early August? We hope so. We're, we're in discussions with Churchill Downs, and, and I think we'll get to that point, and hopefully in the next couple of weeks, we'll be able to sort of solidify a schedule, and, and that's the goal. The goal is to, to get it so that about every four weeks, there's races for these horses to run in and, and take them in that progression from the Belmont, and then it looks like I said in July, you're going to have like the Bluegrass, the Indiana Derby, the, the Haskell then the Travers, and then the Kentucky Derby, and then the Preakness. So we're trying to make that happen, and we're close. We just need to work some things out with Churchill. So, Martin, we, we are aware of most of your duties, but I'm sure during this pandemic, it's uh, encompassed a whole lot more. What, what are you having to take care of, and how much have you learned about COVID-19 and testing? <laughs> Too much. <laughs> There's some days where I, I, well, I shouldn't even say it, but it's like, gee, I, I need to get this so I can have about 20 days off. Um, it's been, it's been interesting. Like, it, you know, obviously we stopped racing March 15th. And at that point, I don't think any of us sort of realized what was coming, um, even at, at that stage. And then obviously being in New York, um, it just sort of, you know, took over New York City and, and swept through Long Island. And, so um, we've got a group, a, a Naira um, or a, a, a horseman's group that basically meets at nine in the morning and five o'clock every night. And all we discuss is the backstretch and the employees back there. And if we've got someone who's sick or needs help, um, the different protocols that we have in place, um, how are we gonna get people fed? Can we help them get on unemployment if they need to? Can we get the people that don't have jobs currently? Can we get them jobs with trainers that need help? Um, people that need to be isolated, maybe they're not feeling well. Can we get them isolated? Can we get them to see a doctor? Um, late March, early April, it was very difficult to get testing done. And so it was literally like, okay, how do we get this person tested? Um, there were days we have the best clinic on the back stretch, as you know, Jerry, and there were days where they just didn't have any tests available. There'd be one day, hey, we have three tests today. We have eight tests tomorrow. We have one test coming up on Saturday. So it got very tricky there on just trying to find people um, the medical help they needed and then trying to find masks. You know, we, we finally, through NITA, were able to, to get someone in China to, you know, buy 200,000 masks. But it was hard initially just to get all of the protective gear needed. And then putting protocols in place because this was new. Like I'm, I run racing. I, I'm not a healthcare specialist. So it was suddenly going online and learning as much as we could and talking to the health department officials. And, you know, like Wanda over at Nassau County Health is now like our second best friend. Um, so it was just dealing with a whole nother situation and another group of people and it's been interesting and, and like we're going to start racing in June 3rd, but the health side of this doesn't go away. Um, we're going to race, but we're also going to have protocols in place and still caring for the people in the backstretch and trying to help, you know, any of the employees. Um, 
it's been challenging. It's been frustrating. It's been sort of, um, you know, you think about life a little bit because you've got people that are gravely sick or in the hospital and, and, you know, um, at the same time, I think, you know, between Best and the Chaplain and Glenn Kozak and Dave O'Rourke and NIDA, we've all sort of come together. And, and that's the strength of America. And it's the strength that probably backstretches in the racing community that when times get tough, we, we come together and we help each other. So Martin, is it fair to say that uh, you can't wait to get back to the day when your biggest concern is how to fill that non-winners of three other than allowance race on Saturday afternoon? <laughs> I want to be a placing judge. <laughs> I go sit upstairs and look at photos. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it's going to be, um, it's going to be nice on June 3rd to just get racing going. And, and if anything, it's just, I shouldn't say it's going to be a distraction, but it's like, oh my God, we get to watch the first race and sort of get your mind off of all the other things we're trying to work on. I mean, literally um, today we're working on trying to get Saratoga open for training and get Oklahoma open and get those protocols in place. Um, so um, there's just a lot of work to be done in the next month, but happy to be racing, happy to get, you know, money flowing to owners and trainers and jockeys and jocks agents and, you know, everybody out there. Um, so, you know, it, it's exciting. I mean, it is, it, it's sort of, um, you know, at Naira we race every week and, and obviously we haven't been running and it's like opening day, June 3rd. Woo. Like we don't really get that. Maybe you do for like the opening of Saratoga, but, um, this opening day is is probably going to be special. Well, I think Jerry and I speak on behalf of racing fans everywhere. Thanks for all that you've done behind the scenes and the rest of the team at Naira for going through, jumping through all the hoops you had to jump through and all your virus research and your human resources work and things like that to get racing back up and going in New York because the whole industry and sports fans in general, you know, really depend on – at this time more than ever on New York racing to get back up and going again. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I appreciate that. And I just, you know, there's been a lot of teamwork here, a lot of, you know, Glenn Kozak and the night, the people and the best people and the chaplain. So it's really been a team effort and, and, you know, everyone's pretty much been working seven days a week and long hours and, and, you know, it's been very rewarding and, you know, we hope that um, everyone gets through this crisis healthy and, you know, we get racing going again and, and, you know, we get back to some sort of normalcy down the road here. So, you know, thank you guys. I appreciate it. Um, you know, we'll see a Belmont Stakes Day, hopefully. Yeah, Martin, I'll be looking uh, forward to open day at Belmont as much as I did when I was riding. And thanks a lot. All Take right. Care. Thank you. As we continue racing from, from home, we're now joined from California by jockey Mike Smith. Mike, I guess if we had talked to you like this a month ago and we had said, uh, hey, thanks for taking time out of your busy schedule, we might have been joking. But uh, now I guess you do have a busy schedule, right? Well, it's back on, yeah. So we're excited about the, getting the opportunity to start back. Uh, and it went really well, uh, much, much better than, than we all expected, to be honest with you. Santa Anita did a did a great job of getting us ready. So Mike, with this upside down world we're living in, um, I know you're glad to be back to riding, but your living conditions are a little <laughs> extraordinary. I mean, more so than any other place that, that started running in the country. Um, you're quarantined in on the grounds of Santa, Santa Anita. So explain exactly what it is and how it, how it went through the first weekend. Yeah, LA County is really strict, you know, so we, we're going to probably have the, the, the harshest, I mean, as far as uh, the living uh, facility and everything, we got to be quarantined in these trailers. Uh, but they're, they're called star wagons, you know, they're there, uh, to be honest with you, I'd like to say that we're, you know, we're kind of roughing it out, but it, man, it's, it's about as high end of camping as you could possibly imagine. Uh, they're beautiful trailers. Uh, they're very comfortable. They have a little kitchenette shower and uh, each trailer is a two bedroom, has a divider in the middle. And again, it went really well. It was, I felt like a kid again. I, back in the day, Jerry, we would have, we would have loved to have a racetrack to give us a trailer like this and live on the backside for free. I mean, they're that nice. Uh, and it went really well in, in the accommodations as far as uh, 24 hours, a little food service and coffee and tea and 
breakfast in the mornings, dinners at night. I mean, and the guys just kind of get together. We have movie night uh, after movie night that we play a little poker, then go to bed. <laughs> so we're taping this on late, I think it's late Wednesday morning, your time out in California. And we had to wait on you to get back from taking a COVID-19 yeah. test. Other than yeah. <laughs> the trailers and all that, what are some of those precautions that Santa Anita is taking to keep everybody safe? Well, this bracelet's actually just the temperature to make sure that you have no symptoms to even go in to take the test. Now, the test won't come back until uh, late uh, Friday evening, I mean, uh, uh, Thursday evening. And then as soon as you clear within your, your eligible, then you can come in in the morning. Uh, so as soon as you get done working in the morning, if you have to get on a horse in the morning, again, you'll have to take your temperature again just, just to double check, make sure, but you've already passed your test. And, and uh, then you go into your quarantine area. And then we're there, uh, Randy, until it, it's, you know, the, it, normally it would be a Sunday night that we could head home. But this week, it's going to be Monday night because of Labor Day. We race on, on uh, Labor Day. So it'll be Monday night. So we'll be in there three nights. And everyone who's in that area is, is, has been tested and, and are in quarantine. You can't leave and come back. Do you feel safe? Very, uh, very, very safe, actually. Again, Santa Anita has done a tremendous job. Uh, if anyone has to do anything like this, they need to take a, a page out of their book because they did a really, really good job, and it, it's very comfortable. So, Mike, a couple of people have asked me, it, would it be almost impossible to sneak your wife Cynthia in? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, there was, I guess there was a guy uh, that tried to come up over the fence the first night, just somebody come off off the street and saw these trailers, I guess, thought maybe – just sleeping one of them, I guess, and uh, they caught him pretty quick. He didn't, he didn't even get halfway over, and he was, he was down and out. <laughs> so, no, there ain't no sneaking in. Okay. So, it's pretty weird out there right now. It's pretty weird everywhere. Um, the Triple Crown has now been reshuffled, right? Belmont Stakes, June 20. Kentucky Derby, September 5. Preakness Stakes, October 3rd. What are your thoughts on that uh, redone Triple Crown? Hey, again, you know, we're all in a, a, a strange place that none of us have been before. And, you know, it is just what it is. Uh, I'm just so happy that we're going to get to have all three, to be honest with you, Randy. You know, some people, uh, you know, don't agree with changing the distance and everything. But being it's the first leg of the so-called new Triple Crown uh, for this year anyway, uh, it, I think it makes a lot of sense for them to back it up to a mile and eight. Uh, uh, actually, I like your guys' opinion on that, to be honest with you. But I, I think it's probably a good idea. You'd hate to go a mile and a half you know, right off the bat first one. So, you know, then you're going to go on into the Preakness at the 16th of a mile further. Then, of course, you'll have the mile and quarter Kentucky Derby. Uh, but, yeah, it's going to be different. There's going to be an asterisk by it, but then I, I'd like to be that guy that won that. <laughs> now, Randy and I were talking about this in answer to your, your point, Mike, that if, if you made it a mile and a quarter, as you say, they're not ready. These horses aren't ready to go a mile and a half the first, you know, the first race of the Triple Crown. And if you backed it up to just a mile and a quarter, you know yourself, you've ridden at Belmont, you know, many, many years of breaking on that turn is so unfair to anybody outside that it just makes sense to run it around one turn out of that chute with 16 horses at a mile and an eighth. Exactly. I mean, you'd have to be on cigar to, to overcome that, as you well know. You were, you were stuck out there before. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it would take a, a, you know, a horse that's probably, you know, a special horse like that to be able to win from the very, very far outside. Uh, so yeah, just that straight long run down to the back. I think it's a, you know, the mile, a one turn mile and eights, I, I think is easier on a horse. And for it to be the first one, I, I, I just think it makes sense where the horses uh, keeps him, I think, safer anyway. You have said you expected to be at Belmont for the Belmont Stakes. Um, who would you be riding? Do you know at this point? It's not that far off. It's not that far off. So the colt that I have right now with John Sheriff's, a colt called uh, Honor AP, is a really nice colt. Uh, I think is going to go ahead and stay here and, 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 and of course, compete in the, in the Santa Anita Derby. Uh, so I'm going to have to pick something up. Uh, Jerry, so, uh, Bob, uh, kind of let Bob know that right away as well, too. You know, he's got several, you know, that are heading that way of really nice horses and, and, and a few other guys, you know, from, from, from back in New York that I've, I've reached out to a little bit just to see. Right now, I actually have nothing for it. I'm, I'm just hoping uh, that something, something opens up. I certainly want to be a part of it. So you mentioned Honor AP. He's rematched against uh, Authentic and what's shaping up to be a pretty short field for the Santa Anita Derby on June the 6th. Give us your scouting report on Honor AP. 
He's training very well, uh, Randy, really, really well. But but so is Authentic. I've been watching both of them uh, train uh, with a short field. The advantage would probably go to him again, I would imagine, uh, uh, just pace factor. Uh, unless someone in, is in there that's really quick that can, you know, keep him entertained up there for a little bit and help soften him up for me. But, uh, but uh, this horse should be fitter than he was the last time they met. You know, we had missed some time from a foot bruise. He had missed a good month and a half of, of training. So we, we knew he was going to need that last race. He's doing really well. His last work the other morning was, was uh, 126 and well within himself, all by himself. And he's, he's the kind of horse that gets a little bored the last part. And for him to finish up and, and go on 126 was really well for him. So um, at age 54, I still believe you're – if not the, one of the fittest jockeys in America, you have a, a workout regimen that's second to none. Uh, how's that going and how have you had to alter it with gymnasiums being closed? You know, I just doubled up on my, on my uh, cardio. So uh, stamina wise, uh, I'm, I'm actually probably fitter right now. I didn't have a not problem at all uh, on last Friday, you know, riding. I mean, other than a little bit of cobwebs at first one, but uh, after that, man, I mean, fitness wise, I was great. So, you know, I just, you know, I try to run a 10 K about every other day, which is five miles. And then I'll, I'll ride my bike 15 to 20 miles in between every now and then, if I've got a lot of energy, I'll do both in one day, but uh, I just been doing that every day and, and uh, eating well and, and, and taking care of myself. And I feel wonderful. Good. Like your setup there, Mike, uh, that's obviously Zenyatta behind you. Yeah. That's the, the big girl. She just had a, she just had a, a, a curling, uh, I mean, a candy ride a baby the other day. So nice memories. Bring her, yeah. She comes everywhere with me. Even even if I don't bring this, someone has something as Zenyatta somewhere wherever <laughs> I go. Like, I, I would suspect there's at least a one picture of Justify not too far away. I got a beautiful painting of Justify that 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 uh, that we were that Bob and, and Jill uh, gave us for Christmas. Uh, and I just, I, I got to find a special spot and, and I don't have a whole lot of room here in, in, in my condo. So it's, it's a small condo and it's just straight up and down. So we're going to find a special spot for that sometime soon. Hey, Mike, thanks for Zooming with us. Thank, thanks for taking your time out of your now busy schedule. Good luck yeah. out there at Santa Anita and good luck in the Santa Anita Derby with Honor AP. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Hope to see you both soon.